Matt Chandler announced to his congregation during a public live stream of Sunday morning service that he will be stepping down from the pastorate for an indefinite period of time. This is due to an inappropriate relationship with a woman who is not his wife. I'll be providing the summary for you, and then I'm going to give you three reasons why I believe the Village Church elders are unqualified. Three reasons why the Village Church elders, all of them, are unqualified. So let's go ahead and start, and I'm simply going to read you the statement by the Village Church. There is video available, and it's all over the internet. You can certainly find that, and I will link that for you as well in the description. But I'm just going to go ahead and read this for us. This is the statement that they released. A few months ago, an individual approached the Village Church's lead pastor, Matt Chandler, with concerns about the way he was using direct messaging on social media with a woman who was not his wife. Matt shared those concerns with his wife, Lauren, and two elders, Josh Patterson, an elder chairman, Jason Swords, that same evening, and submitted to their leadership in addressing the situation. The elders commissioned an independent law firm to conduct and review to conduct a review of Matt's messaging history across social media platforms, cell phone, and email. The investigators' report led the elders to conclude that Matt violated our internal social media use policies, and more importantly, that while the overarching pattern of his life has been above reproach, he failed to meet the First Timothy standard for elders of being above reproach in this instance. We are strong proponents of brothers and sisters in Christ being friends, but there are boundaries around what's appropriate in these kinds of friendships. A pastoral role requires a greater awareness of those boundaries. In this case, while the messages were not romantic or sexual in nature, the frequency and familiarity of the messages crossed a line. They revealed that Matt did not use language appropriate for a pastor, and he did not model a behavior that we expect from him. While the elders believe that that this did not rise to the level of disqualification, we do hold elders to a higher standard of behavior. The elders concluded, and Matt agreed, that Matt's behavior was a sign of unhealth in his life, and that the best course of action would be for him to take a leave of absence from teaching and preaching at the village church. Matt's leave of absence is both disciplinary and developmental which allows him to focus on growing greater awareness in this area. The timeline for his return will be dictated by the expectations the elders have laid out for his development. We know this update is challenging, and you may have questions about this uh, or want to process this with someone. That is normal and expected. And then the rest of uh, the statement is just simply to the congregation, how they can reach out. They reach out to the care department. Uh, with their, their concerns. And so, you know, this is a really interesting update. Uh, it's sad news to see anything like this happen. Uh, there's a lot of ambiguity here. There's a lot of vagueness, really. Uh, I mean, I feel like the summary, when you watch the video, is the elders, um, uh, this Josh uh, Patterson, and, and Matt Chandler, there, there's, uh, well, let's stick with Josh Patterson. When he came out to clarify what Matt Chandler said, it's kind of like, uh, he's disqualified, but he's not disqualified. We're concerned, but we're not concerned. This is a great issue, but it's not an issue. This is a serious problem, but don't worry, it's not a serious problem. Uh, there's a lot of mixed messages in this whole thing. And uh, I just want to focus on something here, and that is, I want to focus on the elders. Uh, you can go all over the internet and everyone's going to focus on Matt Chandler, so I just want to bring a different angle here, and I want to talk about the elders. These are three reasons why the Village Church elders are unqualified. All right, reason number one, they are not committed to sound doctrine. I mean, 
this uh, it has nothing to do with the current circumstance, of course. This doesn't have to do with uh, Matt Chandler's issue, but if you're unaware of what's taught at this church, they heavily embrace critical race theory uh, and intersectionality. They heavily embrace all woke ideology, which means that a false gospel is preached. A false gospel is preached by Matt Chandler. Uh, it is taught in that church and throughout the church, and it is something that uh, the elders of the church, they, they don't push back against it. In fact, they embrace it and they purport it, which means uh, Matt Chandler, by definition, is a false teacher. And that these men, as well, are false teachers because they are purporting a false gospel. And I don't have time in this video to get into that, but if you're not aware of that, I have an article that I, li I will link you to and I will put that in the description. But, but as far as the issue of elders uh, being needing to teach sound doctrine, I mean, that should be obvious, but we have that right in Titus chapter 1, verse 9. Uh, this is a qualification of elders. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught, so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. So if the elders in the church would have rebuked would have refuted the uh, woke teaching, the critical race theory teaching, then they uh, might be qualified. But because they don't, they're clearly disqualified. That's reason number one. Reason number two, they admit that they are incapable of discerning biblical standards in the church and whether their own church policy was violated. I mean, it's concerning that they went to an outside agency. They went to a law firm. Uh, we're going to have attorneys outside of the church judging what happened within the church. All private information was handed over to these attorneys. All of these Instagram messages, all of the emails, all text messages, any form of communication was handed over to an outside firm to determine what's righteous and what's unrighteous, to determine what's appropriate behavior and what's inappropriate behavior. If the elders of the church don't know what's appropriate, that's a serious issue. And that is disqualification. Uh, it's the elder of the church that, that needs to determine what's appropriate and what's inappropriate. And they, I assume, created their own policy, but yet they don't know if Matt Chandler violated that policy. They had to go to a secular law firm. Well, we don't know if it's secular because they haven't announced anything about the law firm, but we do know that they went to a law firm. Maybe it's a Christian law firm. Uh, certainly the track record of churches such as these, which is an SBC church, the track record is not good as far as the outside organizations that they go to. Uh, but they went to a law firm and they, had, they handed over all this information to them. It was reviewed and they came back and deemed that yes, um, the social media policy, the internal social media policy, was violated by Matt Chandler. Well, it's concerning that they went to this outside organization. Church discipline needs to be handled in the church. Unless something illegal was done, which there was nothing illegal in this situation. In fact, uh, certainly it seems that there may have been something inappropriate. There was a lot of frequency and familiarity. Uh, there, there certainly seems to uh, be inappropriateness. But the fact that this was taken outside of the church is, is concerning. Matthew 18 uh, demonstrates to us exactly, instructs us, commands us as believers exactly how uh, church discipline should be handled. And this is what it says. If your brother sins against you, Go and tell him his fault, between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Uh, so the first... Uh, section of this would be, of course, if your brother sins against you. And then we move on to, it's dealt with by one or two others, and then it moves on to the elders, and then if it can't be resolved there, if it must move on to the church, then you tell it to the church. 
this is how church discipline is conducted. And then we have 1 Corinthians 6 says, When one of you has a grievance against another, does he dare go to law before the unrighteous instead of the saints? Or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Now, this is specifically in reference to believers um, suing each other, going to court against each other. But this same principle applies when outside agencies are involved in the church's matters. This should never have been taken to an outside law firm. Well, number three. They publicly announced the issue in vague terms, leading to much speculation and gossip. Uh, it was very vague, but it was also done publicly. This wasn't something at a members meeting. This wasn't something done privately. This was something on a live stream, on a public live stream of the world. Uh, it means that anyone and everyone that comes across that live stream gets to, to watch everything on a Sunday morning service. I mean, this was planned out by these elders and how they would deliver this information to the congregation. And they chose Sunday morning on a live stream that's to the world. A live stream to, to anyone that would like to, to watch it. This isn't a private matter to the church. This wasn't something that was at a members meeting that's not being live streamed to the world. This is something being live streamed uh, so that all can see. That's, uh, that's, that's a really poor choice. That's, that's just not wise. That's especially because there's much vagueness. Uh, the message, there was such mixed messaging between Matt Chandler, between this other pastor. It seemed to be, the messaging seemed to be that this is, um, this is a kind of serious, but not really. The elders would be saying, you know, we're concerned, but we're not concerned. He's disqualified, but he's not disqualified. Uh, it's, it's just very confusing. And the man that came out to, to give clarification just caused more confusion and disorientation, which is actually the word that... Yeah, the whole thing was confusing and disorienting. My camera cut out, so I will finish here on audio. That's the end of it. I had some takeaways I was going to give, and I will save that for part two of this. This is Adam Markley with Truth Transforms, and the goal of Truth Transforms is to transform hearts and transform minds through the truth of God's Word. So my takeaways, I wanted to deal with some heart issues that we can look at regarding this. Uh, the focus on this episode, of course, was the three reasons why I believe that the Village Church elders are unqualified. I believe that to be a truth. And then in the next episode, considering this same matter, I will be talking about some takeaways that we can uh, apply into our life from the Word of God regarding this situation. I hope you'll join me next time. God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.